Guys, we're back. We are. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you yeah, we're back. Books? Well, because we started the call, you were so calm, and Daniel gave you some information, and now you're a little, uh, mm. you're in a mood. You're in a mood. That's I think it's the election. Like. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No. See, Question mark. Let's not get there. Let's not. Get the there. U.S. election. You know, because there's been I other elections gonna, lately. Yeah, yeah. It's very been up. It's been very up and down the past 24 hours. I after I had my like during the day, I work on my school stuff, so, and then during the night is when I take me time. I was playing Pokemon yeah. Sword, right? And I thought, you know, hopefully I'll get a few gym badges, catch some powerful Pokemon. And hopefully when I then at the end of the night check Twitter, I'll have some good news. And it was looking like at, at one point I checked and it was everyone was like, oh, Texas and Florida are going blue. And I was like, wow, that's that's awesome. That's different. And then like a few years ago in the midterm, it looked like O'Rourke was going to make Texas go blue. Um, and then Florida and Texas went red. And then it, and then. Uh, and then, like, it's been, like, Michigan, Biden just won, and now it's kind of shifted his way, but it's still very, very close. It is um, it is wild. It's been a very wild 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, what did you guys do last night as the election was going, the counting was going on? I was uh, one of those people that I got so tired of looking at projections, at numbers, yeah. and looking at Twitter, but I you, couldn't look away. You're done with the analytics, but you're back in it. Yeah, it just, I was so tired already of looking at a screen all day. Yeah. But I, I yeah, I couldn't stop it. I'm like, I wanted to know. And even though I knew like the projections were not going to, like, were not going to be what was going to actually happen or what was going to be the most accurate, I guess, numbers <laughs> that we saw today. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't think I'd get caught up the way I did with it. Welcome to my Twitter addiction. Kind of like what they taught us in first year about polls. It's like, they're just crap. Like, just don't listen to them. It's like projections. It's like, I don't take it, take them seriously at all. I just kind of wait yeah. for it to actually happen. Oh yeah. yeah Shout out to Shanaz Kermali. She with, uh, you know, who was our, our lab instructor. Uh, she really Alex, did. By the way. Yeah, not mine. She wasn't mine. Not Alex. I'm the sorry, Alex. Details are important. Dave. But sorry, no. yeah, She's she awesome. really helped. Yeah. She was awesome. She helped. She really helped us with knowing how to write poll stories. And I really needed that from the last article I wrote for the editorial project for the Risonian. I really needed that. So thank you if you are listening. Just like the whole thing of like the error number or whatever. It's just like, no. not just that, but like any sort of writing she was fabulous with. Like teaching us how, listen, if you're putting something in, just make it the first few paragraphs because no one cares about the rest. Like teaching us the BBC style, Daniel, was wicked. And like, mm. are you su- thing about, are uh, you okay. suggesting that the head, the, what's in your headline should probably be explained in the first few paragraphs? Yeah. This is a mind-blowing concept to some news organizations. You don't bury the lead. I'm, I'm sorry. I just I want to throw a jab out there. I, I've seen some horrendous stuff lately. Mm-hmm. I mean, once the official sort of whenever an actual legitimate claim comes out about the election because the incumbent president has already declared right. himself the winner when it hasn't been official yet, um, there's going to be something is going to happen. Uh, something is going to happen. Uh, that's, yeah. I think we should leave it there. But like it, I hope Either everything go. I hope everyone is good people. Mm-hmm. Is, is all I'll say there. Be good. Wait, people. sorry. Just but- once. One more thing before we go. Let's hear it. So it's you don't bury the lead like you bury Josh Levo in the press box. Yo, whoa! Don't do. <laughs> is that throwing shade at Mike Babcock or something? Yeah, I, I just, I just thought should- of that one. <laughs> You can throw so multiple players' names in there. I it know. doesn't even just have to be Josh Levo. It could be Connor Carrick. It could be Frank Corrado. Okay. All right. Okay. No. Let's. <laughs> yeah. I'm not... I was going to use Ryan Paling and Laval, but I don't know if that's still I mean, too no, fresh. It, it, a tough he fight. sucks. It wasn't the coach's fault. Get better, Ryan. Um, yeah, Ryan. I'm just, I'm just impressed that you managed to turn that into the Leafs as all, Daniel. That was like I was. That was surprising. I didn't think he was going to do that. If you wanted to see my visible di- you know, disappointment in that, check out the YouTube version of the show. That'll be out tonight or tomorrow? At Probably some point. Tomorrow. It takes a while. Yeah. Um, right. But we feel Happy- like it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you, you put your foot down, Daniel. You yes. tell him who's boss. <laughs> right. Um, 
<laughs> the presidency, whatever. We're over it. Um, right. We're Happy over. birthday, though, goes out to the Karate Kid, Daniel. Take it away. Yes. I feel like you were the one who put this in the talk. Yeah, so it is Ralph Macchio's birthday today. You know, happy birthday. Probably the most important thing happening today. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 80s icon. And, <laughs> you know, this will help lead us to, I guess, a next topic we could probably jump towards. But, yeah, he's a very noted big Islanders fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Written blogs for them. He's followed them since, like, you know, their dynasty years in the 80s. And, you know, just... All around good guy, you know. We haven't met him yet, but I, I really feel that down the line he may be a friend of the show. I, I mean, he's probably busy because Cobra Kai just got a, another thing on Netflix, another season. Oh, is he in there? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They they he bring him back. He's like oh, a okay. car salesman, and he's a dick now, which is like right, just kill the what? character. But yeah, you ever seen the the trailer where he's like, ah, oh, is this the guy? Because obviously, like. The main, the other dude is is the guy he, who whose ass he kicked in um the first movie, and like it, the trailer opens and like his coworker Daniel Sons coworker's like, oh, is this the guy whose whose butt you kicked? He's like, ah, I don't, you know. I gotta watch this now. Which <laughs> what, which Karate Kid movie was it when he, he goes overseas and he's a total dick to Mr. Miyagi? Oh, that's the third one where it's like he takes on another. Uh... Uh, sensei and then he just becomes more of an aggressive that was a really bad movie I only believe the f- one and two exist yeah it's it's like he's turned into Karate Kid 3 but yeah you mentioned he's an Islanders fan and a uh, piece of news today the New York Islanders re-signed Ryan Pulak he's a defenseman may have heard of him to a two year deal cap it is five million dollars that's a ten million dollar value Boy, would you like to have $10 million in your pocket? Alex, thoughts on the deal. And in a second, once we've kind of broken down, we'll look at the Islanders cap situation because there's I, a certain centerman yeah. that needs to be signed as well. Pulak deal, $5 million. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind the deal. Like, uh, let's be honest. Is he not probably their best defenseman? Jeff Merrick would say so. I like, trust him. well, okay. Like, I'm just, I just kind of pulled, pulled up their cap friendly here. Uh, the only guy I can really see beating him out is Nick Letty, but I, I value Ryan Pulak. In my opinion, I Ryan, I value Ryan Pulak uh, more. I mean, no, they, he didn't really get any UFA years, so he, they're walking him kind of to to UFA. But what? Or I don't know what's. What is the Islanders' window? I guess that's what the question is. Because that is a fantastic cause, question. Because it's interesting four defensemen, and on the same year, Boychuk, Letty, Pulak, and Thomas Hickey, and in 2022-23. So I wonder if they're like, okay, take this two-year deal, and once things kind of, I guess. Uh, not necessarily even out, but fix themselves once COVID-19 is ho- uh, hopefully past us. Um, the cap is looking towards maybe going up. I don't know. But right. So that two years down the line, he'll get a big, big payday because all these guys are up. Hey, you also wonder maybe Daniel Two years, you have a second look at that defense when Noah Dobson is hopefully more uh, probably the defense than we all thought he was going to be once he really gets his NHL legs under him. Huh? Yeah, um, I think this is a great deal for the Islanders. I think there's two things when I think of Ryan Pulak is how understated his development was mm-hmm. for New York. Like I knew he was a good player. I knew that he could really become like a solid right-handed defenseman for the Islanders, but I didn't think like he'd become as valuable as this. Maybe it's just because the Islanders have been in the basement quite a bit past few years, especially since he was drafted in 2013. But I think he's a crucial part for that team. I know that when they kind of kind of returned to the playoffs, like you know, they kind of banked on Letty and Boychuk to kind of, to anchor that defensive core. But I think now it's good that they're actually thinking about that transition. Mm-hmm. Well. Poor Letty. I mean, the only reason I, I kind of on Dan, um, Alex's side of valuing who like over Letty, even though like Letty skating is wicked. 
um, is Letty was could not catch a break towards the end of the regular season in the playoffs. The guy just kept getting hurt at no fault yeah. of his own. I mean, he was probably like a millimeter away from being blinded in his one eye when, with that arterial leccan incident. Um, and yeah, I, I'm the same. I love the deal for the guy. I mean, a right-handed defenseman is that important for $5 million? Uh, yeah. And then I do wonder, it's like, the defensive window and picture there for me, I question lining up because the forwards is just such a mess. Because by the time maybe that young defenseman Noah Dobson is finally filled out, what is Anders Lee's body going to look like? Uh, Jordan Eberle will be a few years older. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the big question, will Matthew Barzell be there? Because right now he's still an RFA. And looking at the New York Islanders, a projected cap space of $3.9 million. And even if you bridge Matthew Barzell, it's going to be a lot more money than that. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I, I mean, they were talking bridge deal. It was still in the seven to eight. I remember that's what, it, maybe not. Maybe that's not what it was because that seems definitely unreasonable. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but. I think Lou obviously wants that type of number, seven to eight million. Guys, the Barzell's going to look for his money. I I don't know. I wonder if Lou and the Islanders, with everything, and answer Barzell's camp. I wonder if they look at of obviously the financial you know situation around the world, and they do go for a sort of Brit. I wonder if they look at the Braden Point contract because if I'm Lou, I'm saying no, that you're getting that. Do you think he would be able to garner that much loyalty? Like, I know Lou has these powers we don't know of that he's able to get these guys on these you lost contracts. To Maris, you really want to lose me too? Well, like at yeah. the end of the day, Barzell's an RFA. He doesn't have any leverage mm-hmm. except like sit it out, and then like Holds Lou's going to be yeah. the type of guy to say, "Okay, bye." Yeah, like they can't afford to lose him offensively, but you can't call Lou Lamorello's bluff. That's supposed to be mm. the other way around. So, like. I guess question for you guys, like what is a piece you move out to make more? Very simple. Space? I think it's a very simple. Um, Clutterbuck, Sezikis, Komarov, like any of those guys can go. Mm-hmm. Who's going to take them though? No that's one. Another, that's a dumb question. I, I but, wonder if there's that one dumb team who's like fourth liner. I guess here's the thing, like the way I look at it is we had this discussion about Vancouver and saying we're giving Jim Benning slack for what, because the specific reason is he couldn't move the money because who the hell was going to take that on? So I feel like we're having the same discussion with Lou. Like, sorry, like I get that Clutterbuck has two years left. Sezikis has a year left. Komarov has two years left. Nate Schmidt got moved for a third. Ryan Murray got moved for a fifth. And the only exception was Eric Goodbranson. And I think the only reason he was actually moved is because it seemed like Ottawa really wanted him. Yeah. I I just think it's hard to move. Um, Obviously, I think they have a second buyout window now because they dealt with Ryan Pulak and he was the only arbitration eligible guy on that team. And that only applies, I think, to guys over $4 million. Um, let's be honest, the only guy who's actually could get bought out would be Andrew Ladd, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Like, what would the bio look like? Oh, God, you, you think they trade one of their big fish? No? No. Like a Josh you, Bailey or a Brock Nelson? No. I said, I think, no, 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 no. Because like, you can't score to begin with. I think it would be a pretty silly move to trade one of your few scorers already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, just to clarify, I do not think they're going to buy out um, Andrew Ladd. Like they're going to save 666 grand. It The cap hits still $4.8 million for the first three years. That's not solving any of their issues. No, no. It's realistic. Uh, all right. Um, Anything else you want to say on the on the staff? Say on the Islanders right now. I don't think so. Daniel. Yeah, I just I'm actually really invested in this right now. I want to know, for Ralph Macchio's sake, of course, uh, what they do moving forward because they have a lot of weird deals that 
I'm like, these guys shouldn't be paid like they are. Uh, hey, no, <clears> but um, hey, that's the way he's built his team. And hey, he's got Lamorello's got to fix it up now uh, because Bowser is just too big a piece to not uh, to not lock up. Like, uh, let's talk about a former Islander, Ryan Strom, currently of the New York Rangers. Um, there is starting high in negotiations, and we always see this of arbitration. This is it's pretty common. But this is like the cow jumping over the moon to me. Um, according to Larry Brooks, the New York Post, uh, Ryan Strome requested a one-year, $5.7 million contract in his arbitration um, brief Tuesday, while the Rangers countered at one year, $3.6 million. And I kind of see that, guys, as the Rangers going for what a fair deal would be right away. Because I really hope Strom isn't trying to pull the card of I played with Panarin because that didn't work for Pat Maroon when he played with me. Oh. Strom. Oh, okay. you cut out there for a second. Oh, Ryan Strom. He's silly. What's he doing? It's dumb. I mean, I think Ryan Strom and Pat Maroon. Firstly, I think Ryan Strom and Pat Maroon are very different players, right? You know, you get what I mean. Like, I don't, no, I, I see the comparison. Of- I know. I think that's definitely, definitely what he's using. Like 70 games this year, he had 59 points. And like, that's a career high, like extreme career high. The most he ha- he's had 50 points in 81 games. That's when they thought he was still a top tier prospect. Yeah. He that was, was two years before. That was two years before he got traded. So is it is his valuation high? Absolutely. Uh, I don't think he's going to get any risk anywhere close to that, but I mean it's worth it, I guess. Like I, I the arbitration in this in the NHL is so weird. Honestly. I want two. Well, I'm going to give you no. What is it the team? I I want to give you two. Well, I want six. Arbitration, you'll have four. It's very silly Daniel, isn't it? For me, I'm like, why not? Like the way he asked her, I just, in, I think in his situation and the way he played, why not try? Right. But a five point seven, argue that he kind of deserves that, and I think he sees where the Rangers are at right now, where it's an up and coming team, and you know they they did build quite a bit of chemistry last year, from you know coming back from their retooling or for whatever they wanted to call it, um, and <clears throat> they see how heavy they are in terms of wingers, but not with centers. And if Ryan Strom thinks he's worth that money, then, you know, all to him. But I think it's it's going to get to, you know, I don't know, like 3.8 for one year. I think that's pretty fair for what he's shown in his career. I wouldn't want to give him more than 3.5. I don't see him as anything more than a third line center. I think that's being generous. I, I I don't have the faith in him. Uh, though if we're looking at another Ranger, this is from Elliot Friedman uh, on Twitter. Uh, Rangers ask arbitrator for a two-year deal in Brandon Lemieux's case at $950,000 and $1.075 million. The player ask is $2 million. And there's the role of maybe Strom has the offense, but Brandon Lemieux has the sort of element of you hate playing against me and you'd probably love me any sort of playoff series and I'm sure they missed him for that very short time he was suspended in the playoffs let us never forget that Daniel yeah um, the Muse son they're both just terrible you know I mean like I think maybe I just think of this because he doesn't really play against you know the Ducks or he doesn't really play against the Leafs all the time so he's the kind of guy where I kind of respect his game I know he doesn't he has like the hard hitting, like pest uh, and skating ability of his dad, but he just can't score the same way. No. So I guess like he is a solid modern day fourth line, you know, aggressive pest enforcer kind of guy that, you know, I think every team needs if they want to contend, if they want to go through like, you know, that slog fest of what the like of what the playoffs are, like that grind. And yeah, I think they did miss him a bit. Like I don't think the Rangers really did have a chance in the playing rounds, but oh, no. No, not at all. But he, moving forward with the amount of like young talent they have, and he's a young guy himself. He was drafted in 2014. He's a piece that I think they should keep around. And 
from I guess the Rangers perspective, the fan perspective, like he'll be that fan favorite that like you know no, no one else will really like anywhere else. Mm, Alex. Yeah, I mean, pretty much what Daniel said. I don't know if he's worth two million dollars, and and again, he's probably just asking for most definitely higher. But the arbitrator is probably going to go one and a half, and either at one or two years. I don't really mind that at all. I think he's still young; like he's not old. He's twenty four, right? I think he'll be worth it. Mm-hmm. All right. A big deal uh, actually came out. One, uh, I completely forgot about this. I won't lie to you guys. But Anthony Mantha, one of the sole bright spots on Detroit, when healthy, uh, re-signed to the club four years, $22.8 million is the value. It carries an AAV of $5.7 million. And do you know what? I think this is going to be a really fair deal. And I think there's real potential that he could outshine this contract because man, when he was healthy, he could score. I think he had a four goal game early in the season too. And on that team, Oh boy, there's always been talent there. Yeah, Mm. uh, for sure. I think if, and I think the thing is he, he, if he stays healthy, um, this contract's going to look like a breeze. Um, And it kind of gets, it kind of gets him, well, he's 26. He'll be, I guess, 30 at the end or 29 or 30 at the end. But it kind of rolls him in to their their future, like confirmed, right? Because I think this was – he took a – two. it was a two-year bridge deal. And then it didn't really – we didn't really know what they were going to do when we talked about it. Go long-term, another bridge deal. But I think this is kind of the perfect fit – for Detroit because they're, they're so they're still rebuilding and, and it it kind of puts them in a spot where, well, they're going to have to sign Dylan Larkin in in three years and they'll still have Anthony Mantha for one more year on a really nice deal. Dan, the man. I actually like, I'm a huge fan of Anthony Mantha, you know, Solid rule junior guy. And also, like, you know, when he went 20th in the draft, like, I thought that was a steal for the Red Wings in 2013. They actually traded down to get him. They actually traded the 18th pick that became Markel Mueller, I believe, the defenseman that went to the Sharks. And, yeah, I think, like, he has that power forward style that I really like that, you know, he get, you know, to, like, you know, like, it's, like, it just reminds me of, you know, like I'm sorry, like a better Zach Hyman with more size. Um, I think Matt could be a leader as well. Um, I don't necessarily see him as like a core kind of guy. I think he's a cut above Chris Kreider, but he's someone that will really complement like the younger core that's developing in the Red Wing. So it's really nice to finally see him get his payday. Um, I think he is going to get a lot, keep getting better and. Yeah, it's like it's just solid. I, I really like the length of the contract. Just to go on the quickly to go back to that trade. So they traded um, for San Jose trade for the 18th overall pick, which they ended up using on Mirko Mueller. The Red Wings acquired 20th and 58th overall. That 20th, obviously, Anthony Manta. The second round pick became Tyler Bertuzzi. Wow. Well, wow, San Jose really good. kind of messed that one up. <laughs> Did a no no on that one. Man, hey, um, the Sharks, trouble of their own. You know, what I, what I really, really like about Detroit all of a sudden is the only contracts they have that are longer than two years Larkin, Mantha, and the Abdicator buyout. But that's a, that oh, was yeah. a necessary evil. But uh, they're in such a great shape. Eisman really does have a blank sheet. And you know what? Mantha and Larkin. There are much worse pieces to have than those guys. I mean, so the Franz Nielsen era is ending. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I don't know if we ever thought of it like that, Daniel. I don't think anyone was like Franz Nielsen. I mean, no. well, it seemed like Daniel was thinking that way. He, well, he was an All Star for the Islanders before yeah, he signed so- that huge contract. Oh, okay. Being an All Star doesn't mean anything anymore. Let's no. Leo, Leo Komarov was an All Star. <laughs> All right, though, uh, <laughs> this is when you know that uh, 
Things are getting barren in the way of news. Uh, we have a few depth signings to talk about. We'll also do a deep dive on the Winnipeg Jets uh, not that far away into the near future here. Uh, though first, I'm going to get it up right now uh, because at the end of the playoffs, nothing's quite like hearing about everyone's injuries. It took a little while to get the exact of it, but the Dallas Stars, two major losses have been announced here. Ben Bishop, who basically didn't play in the return to play at all. Andre yeah. went right knee surgery to repair a torn meniscus. The rehabilitation recovery time is approximately five months from the date of surgery. And Tyler Sagan underwent a right hip arthroscopy and labral repair. The rehabilitation recovery time is approximately five months from the date of surgery. I got that from TSN via the Dallas Stars Apparently on Twitter. Um, damn, 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 damn. That is going to be a rough start to the season for Dallas, if we have a season. Because not only now in that are they going to have to rely on Jake Onger as a solid backup in a condensed season, most likely, they're going to have to rely on Anton Kadobin, who, as great as he was in the playoffs, played so much hockey in a series that had back-to-backs in the cup final. This could, and you just lost your number one centerman, who's good for 70 points like it's nothing. Uh, What a serious set of red flags to start there. Alex, that's like exceeding track limits and you've been given the black and white flags on F1. This is Roman Grosjean level of, of, oh boy. (laughs) I mean, it's going to be tough. I think the thing with, um, Dallas is it's interesting and yeah like I think make it like it'll be interesting to see what Anton Hudobin looks like at the beginning of next season and I think it de- again it depends on how long until we actually start like now that we're talking about now I think the latest thing was we're probably not going to get hockey back until February and it just feels like that keeps getting pushed back and back but with Tyler Sagan's injury they Yes, he was there, but let's be honest, like he practically wasn't there during the playoffs. And I think they still really succeeded um, without him. And I think, I don't think it'll be as bad as we think it is. I, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be as bad as uh, we think it is. I think they'll be fine without him. I think eventually, you know, that will, it'll end up catching up to them. But I think to start the season, you know, they just made the, They just made the um, cup final in a bubble. Uh, They're hockey players. So I imagine they're not going to take it like a normal, like, like an average person would. And, and I think they're going to get the season running. Like look at what happened with uh, Boston. Right. And I get, I get, they didn't have the injuries, but they lost in the cup final in game seven. And they ended up winning the president's trophy the next year. Mm-hmm. Man, um, hey, you talk about Boston. They they also have a. Yeah. They will be an eye to keep. i say um, there will be a team to really keep an eye on because of Pasternak being gone. You wonder what they're going to look like without Tory Crew. Uh, though Daniel, I'd love to get your little uh, little view on this as well. Big yeah. losses for the Stars. Yeah, when I think of the Stars now, you just kind of think that you know, in a way, they truly did go all in <laughs> trying to get to that cup final and the way they kind of like scraped themselves to that, you know, that, that, that was an amazing effort by them. But I kind of think too, with what the way that lineup is, you know, they didn't really make too many changes. And I just kind of think about like, are there other cracks there? Because one thing I kind of think of is like Joe Pavelski's age, where it's a guy that they really did have like rely on heavily, but this guy is like 36 turning 37 i think he was a year over he was like a bit of a night i think it was a 19 year old in his draft so he's getting up there you know the it was a bit of a drought from a lot of their top guys as well when it came to scoring you know i'm thinking of jamie ben and when it comes to like you know internal reinforcements i the way i look at their young guys that are supposed to be coming up you know i i I, like with 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 the exception of like mira heiskanen i look at you know, Denny Grianov, I think of 
Radek Fasca, I think of like someone who, you know, has been up and down and that's like Julius Honka. Like, I don't know if he wants to be on the team anymore. And there's these guys that they've been their first round picks that I don't know. I don't see them as game changers or players that could be added here to give a bigger responsibility to, you know, to kind of weather the storm to, you know, for the possibility of, you know, maybe other injuries coming up or guys not being a hundred percent or playing on a condensed like season schedule. So for me, like I, I really like, maybe I'm just being a pessimist. I'm doubting the stars, but I just don't think they're going to be as good as they were in this run. Mm-hmm. You, there's going to be a bit, you know, Radic Faxa must be happy. He got that contract because man, is he gonna, <laughs> he's, he's going to have to start really earning it to start the season for the stars. Well, if, sorry, if, go. Uh, without Tyler Sagan. What about Rupe Hints? That guy doesn't have a contract. Like that, he's still, he's still, I believe he's an RFA. And like that guy, what, like him and I'd say he was their, Rupe Hints was their second line center. Was he not? Yeah. And then, right? Like he also got injured and it really showed. Right. And, and, and now that Sagan's going to be out until April. And yes, we don't know when he's cut, when they're coming back. But like Daniel said, it showed when he went down. Well, this is from 2015. Oh, no, 13 and 14 before they got Sagan. But Jamie Ben played first line center <laughs> during that time. I don't know if he's going to have that same success now, but I remember that um, he played center. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's Faxa, Dickinson, Downing, and that's it right now who are signed centermen. And a few of those are C slash left wing. So, uh, <laughs> Bit of, bit of a concern there. Uh, I'll tell you though who who uh, who should be concerned. Buffalo needs guys. Like they just they need guys, and they let a good guy go, a solid, fair guy. I don't know why I put Dominic Cahoon. It's Dean Cahoon, isn't it? It's no, Dominic. it is Dominic Cahoon. Yeah. Who is Dean Cahoon? Adam? I don't have know. No idea. Anyway, um, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Edmonton signed Dominic Cahoon to a one-year deal, fellas. A just a harmless, low risk, solid signing for the Oilers, I'd say. I mean, we're again, we are at the point of no news in the offseason where we are talking about a depth signing. So, I, I mean, Adam, shoot, what do you, Adam, what do you uh, when uh, the Edmonton Oilers sign a winger, that is not a depth <laughs> signing. I hope That's you true. know it's that. That's true, it's a top six, top six. It <laughs> If unless your name is like uh, Josh Archibald, it's not a depth signing. <laughs> Listen, I, I mean, it's a sneaky. Player. It's it's low risk, high. It could be low risk, high reward. Um, I believe he split time between Buffalo and Pittsburgh last year. If I did my math right, he had in fifty six games he had thirty one points between the two. Not bad. Yeah, Not Pittsburgh bad. traded Ali Mata for him, I remember. Really? Yeah. A good history lesson there, Daniel. What else can you tell us about Dominic? Put you on the um, Let's see. Let's see. He played the World Juniors. But undrafted, <laughs> university guy. He did play the World Juniors. Oh, my yeah. God. And then, did, come on. How did <laughs> I get that before you? I know. I'm sorry. I'm just coming. I'm going off memory. Um, oh. I remember, like, I, I don't know why Buffalo, they traded... Evan Rodriguez and Connor Sherry to get him, and then they're like later. I I don't understand. I don't well, know. I maybe mean, he didn't want to come back. We don't know. Sure, that's pre. You know what? That's a very good possibility. Because he that's has a, a first line spot on Edmonton, so you know why not take it? Honestly, he does. I don't know if you're saying that as a joke or not, but he practically does. Like yeah. Connor McDavid needs a winger. And it doesn't need to be sort like, listen, I, I like Tyler Ennis. I just don't know if that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. I'd still listen. I'd still, and, and they'd have to make moves to do this, to bring in Mike Hoffman, because all you need, if Mike Hoffman is the player that everyone says he is, that you just, he can just shoot. Just do it. Connor McDavid go, can. Though? You're right. You're right. But I push very hard to try to get Mike Hoffman. Hey, you want to come here for one year 
play next to Connor McDavid, it's not a good solution. Absolutely, right? It's not a good solution. It's a one-year fix because Mike Hoffman's not re-signing in Edmonton, just like how Taylor Hall's not re-signing in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. But if you have Mike, like, look at who Connor McDavid's had on his wing. Zach Cassian, Alex Chason, Tyler Ennis, Andreas Athanasiu, Pat Maroon. Put a guy like Neil Mike Hoff, Neil Yakupov, Leon Dreis. I don't, yes, he was technically his line mate, but he should have been his own center from the beginning. Um, he, he, Mike Hoffman would be Connor McDavid's best line mate in the NHL. I think that's fair. Uh, anything mm-hmm. else you want to mention about Dominic Cahoon? Or- no, I didn't even talk about Dominic Cahoon, which is unfortunate. But sneaky, that was a good sneaky, pickup. sneaky sign. Yeah, sneaky good pickup. Thirty-one points. It's pretty good. I mean, On yeah, a third- Buffalo team and a sheltered Penguins um, spot, so you know it's not bad. Uh, talk about not bad. Warren Fogle resigns with the Hurricanes, one-year deal, two point one five million dollars. Uh, I like Warren Fogle. I think he has a weird name. I like it. I like his last name. Reminds me of a band. Like that would be the name of a band. Fogel. Old sink or something. I Reminds know. me of, like Fog Hat. I don't. Know. What? I don't know what you're talking about, Daniel. Fog There's a band called like Fog Hat, isn't there? I don't know. I don't know. No, okay. I have no idea. This is. News I have to, to me. check this. News to me. If there's, if there's one criticism of Carolina, more scoring, and that's a depth guy. He did 13 goals last year. I mean, that's. 13 goals, 17 assists, 30 points, 68 games played. I mean, he's he's fine. Fine player, fine signing. I avoid arbitration, I believe. So great. All right. Yeah. Before we move forward, Warren Fogel, I got the information on Fog Hat. Okay. They're an English rock band formed in London in 1971. The band is known for the use of the electric slide guitar in their music. Cool. Okay. Inter- yes. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Warren what? Fogel. Oh, Warren Fogel. Yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, it's a it's a good signing for, like, listen, you're just re. It's just a re-signing. You're avoiding arbitration. Probably gonna, we'll see what happens this year if we have a season, which apparently is in question. Um, I mean, I'm still not happy they didn't fix their goaltending. Like, but I can live with it, I guess. Because James. I guess, like, yeah, I guess. I, are you happy with their goaltending? No. I thought no, they were going to no. do something. I'm t- I, f- Colorado. I have a feeling that Robin Leonard signing in Vegas screwed a lot of teams up. Well, because they made that last stealth sort of run at, uh, at Markstrom and it didn't work out. Who, Which the Hurricanes? Really yeah. Uh, Freeman was talking about it on 31 Thoughts after free agency or the main sort of rush. Oh. And if, if, let's see, if I'm Mark Stroh, if I look at, apparently he, he likes that part of Canada. And again, and then and, Hartman gave us really good insight with uh, Elias Hindo, Lindo. Yeah. But like, I would have given Carolina a serious sort of look at. What did Friedman say? Was it, um, if you remember, do you remember if it all was a short term deal? Was they made a late. Oh. Stealth offer is all I recall Friedman saying. I wonder if he, they offered him a shorter term contract. That would be my initial just Maybe, a thought. Yeah. That because that seems like Carolina a Carolina type thing to do. A creative deal. Mm-hmm. Also, the way like the, the Flames are, deal. like since Mika Kippersoft, to be honest, they've been so bad with finding goaltending. Calgary. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, Calgary. Like, they've been bad. Who's been, they've been badly goaltending. Like who's been their best goalie since Kippersov? Is it is it Big Save Dave? I, well, yeah. Which if, is unless because like they tried to make Brian Elliott. What's starter. the guy's name? Kari Ramo. That guy was on Calgary. Do you remember yeah. that? Name? Yes, Montreal uh, Canadian. He did the. I, I remember he did the. Uh, what that? What was the save? He did this really cool save and it absolutely blew my mind at the time. He was playing for Calgary. I remember specifically that he was supposed to be the future goaltender for the. Uh, what was it? Yeah, the future goaltender for um, Calgary. The Lightning no? when he oh. was with Mike Smith. Oh, 
So, Wait, what? <laughs> Tampa with Mike Smith? Yeah, so Mike Smith was drafted by Dallas in the fifth round. Then they what? traded him in a package for um, Brad Richards. When Brad Richards was putting up like 90 points a season, it was pretty crazy that the Lightning traded him. And then, um, yeah, and then Mike Smith God. lost to Dwayne Rollison. So, and then after that, he went to Phoenix or and Arizona, this, as it is story. known now. They, oh, yeah. And then Phoenix, now Arizona. They have. And oh, now, God, and now, played there for a while. And in the future, Houston. Yes. I love how in, <laughs> he wasn't that great in with Tampa. I'm looking at his stats. I mean, yeah, that's, a, why is, yeah. okay, that's weird. That's probably that's why really Dwayne Rollison beat him. He redeemed himself in with the Coyotes. That was when he upset yeah. the Blackhawks in 2012. He had yeah. the one playoff run. Yeah, and then for some reason they thought he should have made the Olympic team instead of Mark Andre Fleury. Uh, dude, again, it doesn't matter. Carey Price, stop it. They speaking of the play. speaking of goaltenders, do you know who signed today? Um, I mean, Alex, if I had to use my sort of Dustin Tikarski, my boy, yeah, good old Ticker, other another World Junior great. Yes. If you go to the Hockey Hall of Fame, they have all the goalie masks like at, right at the start, right? And yeah. his is there. God, talk about goalies of the future of, of the revolving door of young Montreal Canadiens. You know, I always laughed at because during the World Juniors, forward, he wore he wore his junior pads for the team, but they were like American colors. Because to Karski, man, or like I remember um, Scott Wedgwood because I think he didn't replace his goalie equipment either for the World Juniors, um, and I think he played for the Plymouth Whalers. He wore green pads. You know what's always been like going against Justin Tukarski? He's small. He's a small goalie. And there's prejudice against that. When I was a kid, I thought he was going to be a superstar. Same. Yeah. He wasn't terrible against the Rangers. It's just like the world the Canadians fell apart. And then he lost his job to like Mutt Condon, I think. And then he lost his job to Scriven. It was just a, just a whole thing. Montoya, Niemi. Thank God for Jake Allen. Right. That was like Time one of the. Uh, oh, sorry. Go on. No, I'm done. Oh, that was one of the tournaments. I remember 2009 World Juniors, where if I remember, that was the team that like they kept winning like six five or eight six, because Zakarski was not playing very well, but they had like John Tavares and like PK Stuban on the team. <laughs> like they had like when they had those superstar guys, they're just carrying like the goaltending. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Get out to Karski. I'm happy for him. Okay. Right. Nice blue Gatorade there, Daniel. Love to see it. That's for the ads. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, I mean, if you want this a delicious drink to help yeah. you get you by, check out Gatorade. Use code two one one no space podcast. That is the <laughs> that is the number two and the number one two hundred one podcast to check out. We uh, we freaking this is not right, sponsored lads. by Gatorade. <laughs> we are. This is not a paper. I just wanted to put that out there. Out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, though, guys, if you want to, listeners, if you want to look at the Winnipeg Jets with us right now, be sure to go to Cap Friendly, click on the Winnipeg Jets, so we can look at their contracts together, or check out the YouTube visual portion of the show. Or we'll have a little gander. We'll have a cheeky gander. Um, I will quickly bring up their contracts so the visual experience will actually be there for the listeners. So, guys, um, let's see quickly. You know what I hate about Zoom? Tell me. You ever, like, you're looking at the syllabus during a lecture and the professor shares their screen and it just, yeah. like, ignores whatever you're doing and just blows yep. up the Zoom call? It's like... It actually happened right now. <laughs> oh, I yeah. was pulling That's up... That's why uh, I thought of it. I was just pulling right. up their... <laughs> They really don't like their fourth round picks. No, they do oh. not have a fourth round pick this year or next or their seventh. That sucks for them. The first off, guys, what I would like to look at is their goaltending because we saw that Connor Hellebuck, when he t- got to um, the postseason, was not amazing. It was not great. Yeah. And one thing I do kind of a problem with starting with the goalies because we'll work our way defense and forwards. Okie dokie. It's just. I like Hellebuck. He's really good. Arguably the best goaltender in the world right now, the way, the reigning Vesna Trophy winner. But I actually wish that they had gotten a better quality goaltender because I just 
personally do not believe in Laurent Brossois. I want to get your guys' thoughts on the goaltending tandem because Caleb can play as well as he wants. I think he'd be the second most games, second most minutes as well. But he's going to burn out. They got to work on that, especially with the defense who is not much improved. Oof, uh, I just checked his stats. Oof, uh, like, Who's man, exactly? Laurent Brassoit. Oh, Lauren Brassoit. Sorry, <laughs> the, the for, ad for, for the Bible Beal. <laughs> what? For people listening without the video, in 19 games played this Ooh. year, Laurent Brassoit had a 3.28 goals against average Oof. and 8.95 save percentage. Not very good. Oof, uh, um, man, oh, not good. Not good. I mean, listen. I really hope he has a. Um, I really hope he has a bounce back year. Like, man, I am looking at this guy. So he's played in the NHL the past one, two, four year, five, one, two, five years. He is the most on again, off again goalie I've seen. Uh, well, yeah, looking at the save percentage, I mean, even his, <laughs> even his goals oh, against boy. average. Yeah, it goes like one game in 14 15 with the Oilers, like 9 6 1. Then you like, it averages out 9 18, pretty nice. Then yeah. the next year, it's like 8 73. Then like in Edmonton again, in a few games, 9 28. And then to the end, 14 games, like, oh no, it's an 8 83. Then his first season, it went big in 18 19, 21 games played, 9 25 save percentage. But then last year, this. He's like Pecorini and Sergey Bobrovsky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's that due means for a good year. he's due for a good year. Yeah. yeah. So they're just it, banking on that. The that's the what they're banking on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, if I am I comfortable with Laurent Bersois? Not really. Um, but it is, I guess, what it is. I mean, like, I guess they have Eric Comrie, who they reclaimed after. Oh, I yeah. definitely feel bad for the for the kid. Uh, well, he's not a kid. He's 25. Um, man. He's always been a favorite of ours. Like, did, went to high school with him. Oh, did you? <laughs> no, if you um, look at a uh, look at 2015. Oh, play for the man. Uh, there we go. Oh, 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 Canada U20 tournament. Two games played. Yeah. World he, was, guy. he was Zach Fukali's backup. That's probably. another. There Looking we go. That's another goal. Takarski probably should have been the, the backup to Brissois. Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I don't know if what Eric Comrie is, so I guess they're really – I don't know. I'm right. very comfortable with Hellebuck. Like I think, yeah. I think, I think that that's the most clear we can be on this lineup. I am extremely, extremely comfortable with Hellebuck. Brassois, not so much. Eric Comrie, probably a little less. That's a very, that's a very, very fair point. Um, Shall we go to the defense? Let's get nuts. All right. Now, Winnipeg's defense will be better by the via virtue of their young defenseman, our year older, Sammy Nugu, re-signed there. Um, and they re-signed Dylan DeMello to a you know, fantastic sort of deal there, $3 million. For Morris, he's another year older. He'll be great. Neil Pionk was all right. Yeah. He'll be better. He put up good numbers, though. Um, but then they bring in Derek Forbert, which is not the worst signing. That's a pretty safe stay-at-home defenseman. But I'm still yeah. looking at this defense of Nathan Beaulieu. How is he still a thing? Oof. Lucas Spiza. I thought Oof. Tucker Pullman was a lot younger, but he's already 27. Mm-hmm. And he was a university our, guy, right? Yeah. Uh, we can check what university did he play for? North Dakota. Ooh. Oh, North was Dakota. Oh. Yeah, North Dakota. Yeah, yeah. I we believe just, his uh, brother just signed to, as well. Not, I don't think with uh, Winnipeg, though. I'll find that as you keep talking. It's just the right defense is DeMello, Neil Pionk, and Tucker Puma. And the left uh, side is still, like, on paper, it's still, it's not, is it better than last year? I think so. Is absolutely. it fantastic? No. but um, I, I, Anything question, could be better than last year. Yeah. Like, how much more, like, how much more helpful would you guys say this defense is for Connor Hellebuck? So I think that's the biggest question. It is a singular step. 
<laughs> if I could put it in any way, it's I walked up a step. That's the best. That's what it happened. Be- because I think you make a good point. They're betting on, they're essentially betting on the future. Like, yes, Connor Hellebuck's 27. We know how weird goalies are, right? So if anything, he's just entering his prime. Yes. Um, so you got Vili Hainola, who played a few games. Um, Sammy Niku. There, I know I'm missing a guy. And it's going to bug Stanley. me. Yeah, maybe it's Logan saying like they have young guys who are going to take steps this coming season and and will take steps in the NHL over the next few years. I, yeah, I, I, I feel the same way, too. Um, I remember I was looking at Dom Lechizan's article on what he considered horrible contracts, and I was really surprised he put Josh Morrissey there. Because I think they're banking on him right now to be the number one defenseman on Winnipeg. And he was talking about how he lost a bit of a step last year because he had such great chemistry with Jacob Trubra that he would not have put those two guys on the bad contract list if they still stayed together. And the way that their game has kind of molded uh, together, like as they developed um, in the same system. But yeah, that was kind of interesting. I think Josh Morrissey is an amazing player. I think that it was more so of the workload than it really was losing a step. I think, Um, I think same here. Like, I think that the structure of the depth has gotten better that guys are going to be better with things. And really I talked about it so much, but like Dylan DeMello getting acquired by this team has been such a solid fixture on that lineup. Like I really like that trade. I hear Paul Maurice likes it too. Uh, he, he described him in a, an adult fashion is all we'll say. Hey, you got it. Modify no trade clause from the deal. Right. Uh, man. Hey. Sorry. Just before I'm just reading this thing here. Um, guy played with literally everyone. What the hell? Demela? No, Morrissey. It's like, oh, it's like a ridiculous he- amount of like, I think it says he played the most with Tucker Pullman because he, I don't think he started playing with Dylan DeMello until the, they got him at the deadline. So like, yeah, he probably took a step back. He's also not playing with a quality, like no offense to Tucker Pullman. He's not playing with a quality right-handed defenseman. And I think your D partner will have some effect on your play. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure because we saw how Jacob things. Truba was without Josh Morrissey this year. <laughs> right. Jacob yeah. Truba. Like, I think the, the, this can go on. There's yeah. multiple guys. Um, some, would, some would argue that the Calder was lost to Jack Hughes because of Chris Dano. People say it. Um, it's a big thing. If that's why they're partners. I mean, yeah. that shows how good Victor Hedman is, is everyone is Victor Hedman's partner. Um, yeah. And I mean, and it, or it can help you. Like Mark, Mark Mathot was amazing in Ottawa because of what he was able to do and help Eric Carlson. Who's oh, going to do his thing? Right. The four words. Uh, this is where it, it gets messy. first off. We don't know what's happening with Patrick Lyde. Eh? Uh, but let's just say, for argument's sake, he plays next year. Uh, looking like he probably won't. But let's just say he is because you know. Let's take the other side of this. Uh, that's a big thing in journalism is doing both sides. Uh, verification, all that kind of stuff. So, how confident are you guys in Winnipeg's forward group next year? Looking that Patrick Lyde will have a centerman again. He will have Stastny back with him. And they did play well when uh, Stastny was with the Jets. Even um, though he's 34 years old now. <laughs> and he's slowing down a bit. I'm comfortable with it. Are you comfortable yeah. with it? I, I, I know. The way I see this lineup is I think it's a make or break because they have so much money coming off the books on their forward core that they're going to just go for it. And then but the way I see it, like they're going to go for it. If it doesn't work out or it does work out, they have enough money to re-sign Patrick Line to a fair contract. If he wants to stay. If he wants to stay, yeah. Like Matthew Perot is making – I didn't know he was making over $4 million a year. But then is there money for anything else? I don't think there is. And I mean, and I'm, I, that's, I, I'm absolutely in no way shape saying then that's why you get rid of Lonnie. No, that's why you don't give Blake Wheeler $8.2 million. Mm-hmm. 
at like 33, 34 whenever he signed that deal. But um, oh boy, and how good does that Scythely contract look? By the way, oh, incredible! Six point seven million dollars. Six point six, six one. Sorry. Six oh. Point one. <laughs> oh my god! Here is the thing I find with the team is it's not at looking at the top six. I think they have a strong, I think they have a relatively strong top six. Uh, Shifley, Wheeler, Connor, Kyle Connor. And then you got um, Nikolai Ehlers, Paul Statsny and Patrick Laine. I think that's, that's a incredibly top uh, strong top six. I think the questions then come down to your bottom six. I really like the Thompson signing for them, by the way. I, mm-hmm. I think Lowry and Thompson are are two pretty good depth sentiment to have. Oh, shut up, timer. I think your timer is going off. Just yeah. want to let yeah. you know. What's that sound? Yeah, I, I stopped it right away. Don't worry. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's for my bands. For, uh, my no worries. Okay. Do you have um, to do something? Or you want to take no. a pause? Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, do we have to end the show here? That's, that was the timer. Oh, oh, there you go. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, yeah. sure you <laughs> put a strict rule. It's like I'm tired of these three hour episodes. I don't even know if we've been going for an hour. Yet. It hasn't even, even been an hour. Today. But, like, yeah, I mean, Jack Roslevic, we've talked about him plenty. I mean, again, Andrew Cobb, I player, Peru, not terrible, could be better. Is that it? It's just a, it's a meh. It's not a. They're going to make the playoffs, I think, is safe to say. Yeah. But are they – does this forward group with its depth give you guys confidence that it could – that the Jets could make some actual noise? No. I think that they're a team that's going to be primed to make a deadline rental to try to fix up that bottom six of it. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to get somebody with the assets they have – Long term, they're going to just try to go for like the rental route. What do you because we all know Jack Roslovic's on the block, right? That's pretty at this point, it seems pretty well known. Like, it seems like it's been like that from draft day um, onwards. What on yeah. earth, like, what on earth do you get with from Jack Roslovic in terms of value? Do I see it's like, I don't know. Because maybe he's just been buried on the depth chart, but like I don't know what he is. Because if he wants to get traded because he's not getting enough minutes, like I wouldn't be comfortable putting him in a top six role, or like for a team that like receives him. Or if I see it this way, like I think he's perfectly suited where he is. Like I, when I think of Jack Rosovic, I don't think of a guy that you know a sure thing, top prospect or the like, top young guy that you know you should be really looking looking after you should be like on the watch for him right tell you what with winnipeg's draft i'll tell you what he is it's become expendable to be honest with you i mean yeah man like you know what i i when we had the discussion about winnipeg um and cole perfetti if what's going on in the ohl is going on I would not be surprised if Winnipeg signs him and plays him in a, uh, to see if he's at least kind of ready to play in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know if you send him back to the OHL with if uh, if that if that's what is being said is the case. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about that last episode. And you're referring to hitting, of course. Yes, I am. Check out the check out the clip of that on the YouTube. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hit or not to hit. Uh, anything else you guys want to touch on here with the forward group? And we forgot to mention one player. Um, who's that? Noted former Leafs pick, Dominic Toninato. I didn't even know that. That is news to me. He played with Florida last year. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely <laughs> loving your ads. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. I... <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> response. You have a, you have a plethora. You have a plethora of to say. Subway. No, nothing. I don't want to say anything. I just want. I thought it'd be a good way to spice up the show a little. Yeah, see? Bit. The All I want to say is there's also Canadian Tire, yeah. McDonald's, and Subway. I just wanted to yeah. stop it. Stop, stop suggesting things. 
No, no, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying you're you, you're getting a plethora of ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Thanks, cat friendly. You sold out, damn it. Even though like general managers use your sites, probably. Anything. They most definitely do. That's not. Yeah. yeah we're just gonna stop sharing that now. Okay. Can we for before? Because I know we don't really have much else to talk about, but there's the rumors going around that they might not have a seat. Like the owners are suggesting it might be better not to have a season financially, which would absolutely um, suck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do then. We're going to go on oh, Twitch we'll figure it out. and we're going to play NHL 21. Daniel just really wants to play NHL 21. I mean, like I it's the only thing I kind of, kind of think of, because I think I look back on 2013 where you know, we thought there was going to be no season. So really, like, all I kind of had was NHL 13. That was actually the last Brad. Actually, no, NHL 20 was. But I guess because of the same thing, there was a, there was a canceled games. But, yeah, I think that's the only thing we can kind of go on. Like, I remember NHL 13 was, like, at the time, remember when games were, new games were $60? Oh, that was great, wasn't no, it? No, I yeah. don't remember that. It just seems like they've been $80 forever. <laughs> And um, at Best Buy, when they announced that there might not be a season, I remember like the next week, NHL went down to twenty bucks. Wow! And um, that's the, I picked it up, and like that's been like a game that I remember that year that like I just kind of see like hey, who would win the cup this year kind of thing. But you know, we have our options. The Coyotes keep winning yeah. the division in that in my universes, and I'm not what? taking that in 2021 in uh, NHL 21. Yeah, they they made it to the conference finals in the first year. I was like, yeah, uh, crap. yeah, it makes no sense. But yeah, I I don't. That would it would definitely suck if that's the case. I mean, listen, I think they kind of make a point in saying financially it wouldn't. Like I see it because you're not really paying for anything. Like I don't. Depending on how the um, CBA would work out. Would they even pay? Would their contracts just get extended a year? That I guess I don't know. That that's I remember in the um, business 05 logistics. Lock, yeah, in the 05 lockout, people did lose a year. They did lose a year, but yeah, did they? they lose but did they get paid? I, if you remember, I think they got paid like a certain percentage because I remember that was there, when they introduced the new CBA. So there was a, lot a of rollback, people, right? Yeah, there was a lot of a rollback, and then the Avalanche like lost. Like Adam Foote and Peter Forsberg, because like when there was a salary cup, they couldn't afford anybody. That was when they're still paying like in like 2004, they were still paying like Joe Sackick like 13 million a year. Yeah, wasn't Yager Jeez. making that much back in this Pittsburgh days too? Yeah, which is insane. When they thought Lemieux wasn't coming back, and then they're like, "Wait a minute, okay, we got to trade Yager." He was making 12 was and a half. Was that not it? Right yeah. There. Yeah. Wait, is that what happened? I've never, like, because I don't care because it happened before I was old enough to know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Is that what happened with him in Pittsburgh? So what happened was story, yeah. Lemieux retired due to... The first um, time? His, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the first time due to cancer. And what happened was they really thought it was done. Like he wasn't coming back. You're like, we should probably introduce, we should probably induct him in the Hall of Fame soon. So what's up happening is... Yager is named the captain of the Penguins. And this is when the Penguins were still contending. Like, even though they didn't win in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were still kind of projected to be an okay team. And because I think, yeah, they had Alexei Kovalev. And yeah, like, like they had pretty good players. Like, but what happened was Lemieux comes back. And it's awkward now because, like, the Penguins can't, are like already do, not doing well financially. And they're thinking, okay, what do we do? Do we give take the captaincy away from Yager? And they wait, I think, until the offseason, and they eventually do it. They take it away and give it back to Lemieux. And then... And what did Yager say right later? I think... Apparently, he was okay with it, but there were just reports so that... Because they've asked him this before, too, when he came back to the NHL. Like, oh, were you okay with that? Like, is that why you didn't want to resign with Pittsburgh when you came back from, like, the Euro Leagues? And then he said no. But apparently, that was, like, a bit of a friction thing. And because he was, like, kind of a... You know, you know, he's, he's like the Yager, the fu- loving Yager we know history. in his later years was not the same Yager in his younger years. That's interesting. Because it's like, for a second, I was going to be like, yeah, trade Yager. That's smart because Messier and Gretzky didn't work. Dummies. 
Yeah, and then they traded him for close to nothing to the Capitals. That is, man, I doubt he's ever going to write one, but Yager, if he really took the time, could write a few good books, I think. Like a few good books. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I kind of take away from that is if he didn't go back to the Czech Republic, he could have hit 2,000 points. Because he left in his prime when he was still doing, he was still getting like 100 points a season. That's impressive. Like it's that he still managed to finish second all time in scoring. I think, and no one ever talks about just how good he was. It feels like when we're always talking about the greatest of all time, it's just like, all right, we got Mario, we got Wade, and they just everyone just kind of throws Yager to the side. It's like, okay, X. Because they think he never really led his team. Well, that's dumb. <laughs> that's dumb. It's like a Smalkin argument. It doesn't leadership doesn't matter the, like if in yeah. the terms of your leg like I, oh hey i can like okay 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 right, well, let me just talk about this okay i don't give a crap if wayne gretzky was a terrible leader if the guy scored nearly 900 goals like shut up that's so dumb or oh, didn't lead his team well then like, shut up wait okay, i have another question so what happens if <laughs> leon dreisaitl finishes with like <laughs> Like top ten in points, like is he going to be considered one of the best? But he's playing with Connor sure. McDavid. No, but that's not what the okay. argument is, though. Danny. Okay, okay, I'm just wondering because it's like I just think MVP it was a similar of, situation. No, no, it's he's yeah. not the MVP of his own team. That's what my issue was. Mm-hmm. You're not the MVP of your own team. How are you the MVP of the entire league? I'm not saying Leon Draisaitl is a bad player. No, yeah, he's he's probably what a top 15, if not top 10 player in the league. Mm-hmm. So I'm just thinking, cause I'm just like thinking of like a comparison of like the mod, like of today's today's game. Adam, you're muted. Uh, you're muted, Adam. Okay. Mm-hmm. Weird. Sorry. Let's also not get the whole concept of elite and franchise mixed up because dry sidle is elite. Mm-hmm. I don't say he's franchise. There's only three no. players in this league who are franchise, and that's 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 that's, uh, that's Connor, that's Sid, that's Alex Ovechkin. Like Yager is is franchise. Like like Malkin is in neither is is Leon, but you can you don't have to be like Forsberg, for example. Peter that or guy, Philip. I don't think is. Sorry? No, Peter or no, Philip? No, no, Peter. Peter. I'm just I, making sure. <laughs> yeah. I no, want to clear that no. one. Anton up. Forsberg, the goalie. Oh, if Anton! Like, I forgot about Anton. No, if you talk about hockey and you say Forsberg and you think like Philip, it's like get out. Like, if you ask you a 15 year old, cancel. if you ask a 15 year old, I guarantee you, you need be to. Phillip. No, they need to smarten up. Then they need to like. I obviously I didn't get to see Forsberg play, but like I've watched his highlight. And there's a famous clip of like they were adapt. The, the Panthers are down or winning like six nothing over Colorado. And it's just this thing of shift after shift. Forsberg single handedly gets them in, right? Like people, yeah. because of injuries, he gets screwed. But like Forsberg, we're talking about greatest of all time. If he was healthy, man, I feel like we're going to talk about that with Carlson too by the end of it. Like Eric? He, he puts up the point. Yeah. Like he puts up the point still. But, like, it's still not that level. And, like, honestly, by the end of his career, and he's been screwed out of a few Norrises, Eric Carlson should have been put in, like, the conversation of best defenseman of all time. And I, like, I would die on that hill. He, he was <laughs> just that fair. dominant. It's like the same no, with Lindros, fair. right? Yeah, because of injuries. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, just hits to the head and not being able to turn on the ice. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. Sounds like an issue, right? Yeah. Sounds like a little bit of an issue. High player safety. I remember, I um, sorry, this is just a random thing we talked about before, but I just remember when I played the really old NHL games, I was around like five years old. And I remember I had a friend that he always picked the Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> he could like, beat him? When like everybody was like a ninety on that team, like a ninety plus on that team. Yo, Milan Hayduke third line. Let's I think like Patrick was like a ninety seven in the game. And My favorite time. Sorry, Daniel, go on. Go no, on. Uh, and I remember like I'd pick the Mighty Ducks when like they had Paul Korea, and that's about it. <laughs> have did they retire Hayduke's number yet? 
Um, did, did they? I'm, I'm not sure. Right now. I remember he was captain, and then he's like, I don't want it anymore. And then they give it to Gabriel Landeskog. I don't want it anymore. Sure. That was when like they went through um it was after Joe Sackick retired. Yeah. In 2009. And they went through like every former player who won a cup with them became a captain for a bit until it was Gabriel Landeskog. Because how do you follow Joe Sackick as captain? It was like Adam Foot. Yeah. I, I, even that, like I mean it's it's Joe. Yeah. That's like and, forget the the Messier leadership. That should be the that should be the Joe Sackick. Uh leader. yes, it was it was two years ago. Good. In 2018, okay. January 6th. It took them a long time to do that. I mean, it, rightfully so, because he retired a lot. But I mean, a bit more respect for Milan Hadrick, please. When um, did he retire? Yeah. yeah. Around when? <laughs> when? Um, it when was like around... when Landis Cog was like, right, like, was coming up as like one of their top guys. And Landis uh... Cog was like the youngest captain ever or something, wasn't he? Yeah. Or youngest like, European, at least. I think he was the youngest captain because like, I think he beat Crosby part, by like a few days. But if you're part of that squad, like it shouldn't take that long. It should not. It like, was just it, it, at the time. It was funny to me because like they have Ryan O'Reilly and Matt Shane and Paul Stasny on that team for a while already. And none of them got the captains too. Well, I mean, we talked about this before. I yeah. think the years since they have left those teams more so Matt Duchesne, I think it proves why they did not get those letters. And it says something about Landis Cog as well, not to take away from him. Um, just like how he's kind of kept that team together. I mean, after that season they had when they were last, that could have destroyed them. I can imagine like him and McKinnon, especially Landis Cog himself, was yeah. massive for that team. If there was a spot below last, that's where they'd be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like that's how bad like, it was. Because unlike Detroit this year, they were they had no thinking of being that terrible. No, oh. I mean no. it was it was, bad. It was awful. Oh my right. god! Test of Anthony Mantha and Tyler Bertuzzi next year. How will they bounce back? Yeah. And do you know what's even worse about that Colorado team that was lost? That's how they got Kale McCarr. And it was like, <laughs> oh shucks, we fell the fourth. And it's like he sure he sure and Patrick are like just mad. And Makar is probably going to be a Norris Trophy finalist next year. Who it's funny when the overall, who went third overall? Miro Heiskanen. Miro Heiskanen. Yeah. I mean, Where everyone thought was um, flip a coin. A reach. Flip yeah, a coin, I and I'll take that. either of those. All right. Awesome. Are we done? By the way. I think so. I love these tangents. At the big, at like it like book ends everything at the beginning and the end of the episode. Yeah, I went from yeah. the Karate Kid to talking about. Man, maybe I just want to play NHL. I don't know. Why do I keep bringing it up? Yeah, I it gotta go like hunt for do. a seven gym badge. So, mm-hmm. yeah, keep You're running not playing into NHL. Uh, no, because I'm not, not oh, craving to play it. There's I'm a new because I just signed Ovechkin. But there is a new patch coming out tomorrow, Adam. So for what? Can Jeff uh, Petrie score me more than twenty points, please? I have no idea, but there's there's quite a few things they're fixing apparently. I didn't read okay. it in detail. It was just a long list of things. Because if so. they want to keep screwing the game up, I'm so happy to be playing Pokemon right now. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm very happy Listen, to be running into Wailers on Route 9. Adam they, took, <laughs> Adam, they took your money. They don't care. That's true. It's unfortunate. True. It's, they, took my mo- they took my money, yeah. too. So I'll stick to NHL 7. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Didn't you buy 21, Daniel? No. <laughs> you bought, didn't you buy? Did you not buy 20? No. I bought 20 when COVID just hit, and for some reason, the game went down to like $15 on Amazon for like three days. What? Well, remember, Hell. wait until this game's on sale, too. Not, no yeah. more than $50. Or your yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, if you enjoyed this episode, especially the ending part, that was fun. Never thought we'd talk about Lemieux Forsberg and all that on the show, ever. Um, check out the show on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. All that's going. Uh, thank you to Voice as always for being a fantastic platform for the show. We really do appreciate it. Uh, check out all three of our social media. Check out Alex's blog, my YouTube channel, and all of Daniel's stuff for the Ryersonian. Recently, you just did a story about the election, did you not? Yes. Comparing it fantastic. to Canada's political arena. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel. That's interesting. I mean, Alex, so we, what's going on with the Checo stuff? Can you, can you like... We're on Checo watch. We're on Checo watch. Um, F1. Poor George Russell. Rookie mistake. 
What a fool. Um, Alex Poor Alba Alex probably Alba. losing the sneak. Oh, just just call it out already, man. I yelled Spinella as loud as I could when he spun at Imola. And I felt bad, but it was poor guy. Um, Imagine Gasly and Albon back at Alpha Tauri together next uh, well, season. Oh, Yuki, Yuki be a good Sonoda sitcom. was testing the. No, it wouldn't. Because uh, he's not going to get the seat. Who? Yuki. They had Sonoda testing the Alpha Tauri today. I was like, oh, oh, no. I mean, I hope they would. Could you imagine how feisty Albon and Gasly fighting next year would be? It'd be very, it'd be more interesting than Perez and Alcon because that was, a, that was feisty for a couple of years, but this one would be oof. Right. Um, on the show, on like where you listen to it, it's, if you can give us five stars or any sort of rating, let do it. Uh, let us know what you like about the show, what you don't. Even though you're going to love this show. I would, yeah. yeah. I'm so, look at us. We're amazing. <laughs> um, who want to know what's your favorite Pokemon and why is it Pikachu? Because, you know, he's awesome. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All righty then. See you. <laughs>